Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well, um, staying safe, and hopefully your semester wrapped up smoothly and you guys can begin enjoying your summer. Um, I wanted to first thank you all for taking the time to meet with me today. My name is Brian, I work on our training support team at Hawks Learning, and today we're gonna go look at how you guys can create web tests for your courses. So once you log into your gradebook, you're gonna wanna go to the assignments tab, and you're going to click on web tests. Once in web tests, you're going to see if you've already created any in the past, they'll be here for you. But if you want to create a brand new web test, you can click on the create new. The nice thing about web tests themselves is you can create um, quizzes, tests, practice assignments for your students, um, different assignments to also work with our lessons. Um, in here, you can also create assignments that where you can print them off and share them with your students once you go back to face-to-face -face courses, or you can assign these lessons themselves online to your students. Over here on the left-hand side of the page, you're gonna see the curriculums that you have available to you to start choosing your questions. And on the right-hand side of the page, this is gonna be your actual assignment itself. For today's purposes, I'm gonna use the default curriculum to build our uh, assignment today. I'm gonna click on the default curriculum and I'm gonna pretend that we're creating a chapter two quiz for my students. Once I click on the chapter two, we have all of our lessons available on chapter two readily available right here. And I'm gonna show you one way to create this web test first and then I'll show you a little more details as well. So I'm gonna click on the checkbox next to these first three lessons. We're gonna say that these are the lessons that I'm covering with my students and these are the lessons that I wanna have the quiz on. Up here, I'm gonna put in 15. That's gonna be the total number of questions that I want my assignment to be. And once I click the add button, we're gonna see that the courser is gonna pull questions from these three lessons here. This is a great way to create a web test quickly and efficiently. You can then scroll through here and you can see the questions and objectives that the courser has pulled over for you. If you're scrolling through here and you do not want to use a certain question, you can simply click on this remove button right here. It looks like a little minus sign and you can remove a question. And now we can see we went from 15 questions down to 14 questions. Um, some instructors, they wanna look more detailed at the questions they're selecting as well. So if you come back over here on this left-hand side of the page, you can click directly on the lesson name and it was, it's gonna open up that question bank for that particular lesson. Here you'll see that you can scroll through and you'll have the entire lesson bank for this given lesson right here, 2.1a. And we can see that a couple of these are in use and they'll be uh, indicated right there. If you wanna add in a specific question, just simply click on the add button right here. And now we're back up to 15 questions. You can also add multiple questions at a time on the left hand side of the page we check the box off next to the lesson or the question number so if i'm going to check that one off and i'll check one more off and then we'll see in the top left this is add selected and the two questions that i selected now we're up to 17 questions over here um, you can review your quiz or your web test that you're assigning and making sure that all the questions you like and you want to assign these to your students there's a couple other features I like to point out in here. Um, first one is you can see the different values or the iteration of the question the student might receive if you click on new values. And you'll see as I'm doing this, the values of the questions are changing. So you can see that these are one of the possible iterations that your students might receive. You can also see the show answer. So you can always see the answer to any of the questions that you're choosing, um, just so you can review it as well. And then I also like to point out some questions are going to have this MCQ option right here. So some but not all questions have the ability to be turned into a multiple choice question. So if I check the MC, MCQ uh, box off, we'll see that now I just turned this into a multiple choice question. Another good way to double check it is if you click on the show answer option, you'll see that we have a multiple choice question down, uh, down below with these four question or answers would be the options that your students would see. Another feature I like to point out in the web test tool is if you ever want to lock the value of a certain question, so if you really like this question, 
and you want all your students to have the same values, you can simply click on the lock value button and that would ensure that every single student's gonna have this exact question right here. If we scroll back up to the top, there's some actions you can also choose right here. You can select all the questions if you need to. You can deselect all the questions if you need to. I work with a lot of instructors that like to collapse all the questions and gives them a great overview of where the, or where the questions are coming from. It gives them a quick overview of the objective of the question as well. And it's a good tool just to give, you, give yourself a great overview of the web test itself. Um, as always, you can always lock the order of a web test as well. So if you wanted your students to go in this particular order where this is the first question, this is the second question and so on, you can set that order up by clicking lock order over here. So for today's purposes, I also wanna show you how you can save, save this web test, um, show you how you can assign it and show you how you can export it to a Word document so you can use it as a print materials as well. The first thing you'd want to do if this is a brand new web test like the one we're creating today is click on the save as button. I'm just going to name this quiz chapter two. Once I save my changes, get a little notification that my test has been saved. And first I'm going to show you how you could export it to a Word document. So the first thing you'd want to do is click this export the docs button. Um, when you do this, it's going to come up with the web test name we did right here and once we're here we also have a couple options that where you can export the questions only questions and answers questions and answer key once you click ok you can export this into a word document itself give me one second this is going to load for us and here's our quiz that we just created in Word. Nice thing about this in Word is you will be able to edit this. So if you wanted to remove some details here, edit, the, adjust the spacing if you need to, or anything like that. And then always down at the bottom, this is where your answer key is gonna be. Um, going back in under this assignment builder tool, Another thing you can do from here is you can assign this web test directly from this screen. So the first thing you'd wanna do is click on the assign button. From here, it's gonna open up a new tab and I'm just gonna make this a little bigger um, so we can see it a little bit better. If you click on the, the main settings I like to point out here are the general settings. You definitely wanna take a peek at this when you're first beginning to assign any quiz or test you have to your students. Um, you can put in some start and end dates here and some start and end times. You can also come down below and adjust the test length and the number of attempts that you can give a student. If you give a student more than one attempt, then you will have some grade method options as well. So you can take the average, the best, the last, or the first. Um, and then I always recommend that instructors put this web test into the appropriate assignment group. So if this is a quiz, I'm gonna put it into quizzes. If it's a test, I'll put it into tests. You can save your changes once you're done here as well. And those, save, those changes have been saved for me. Um, another area I like to point out is you can come in and you can look at some additional settings as well. So from here, you can choose when you wanna release the grades to students and when they can review the test if you'd like. Um, you can also allow students to have pause attempts if you would like to, and there's some additional features in here where you can make a web test, a diagnostic test. These are some common tools that instructors like to take a peek at before they actually assign the, this assignment. The last thing, once you have all your settings set up, uh, you can begin to assign it. So the first thing you'd want to do is click this assign button in the top right hand corner, and simply you'll just click the section where you want to assign this to. If you wanted to assign this to multiple sections, you would have a list of multiple sections here. Check that box off and then click assign down below. And we can see that this has now been successfully assigned to my students. And then now if I'm just back on this main web test page, I'm gonna refresh this test list. 
and we can see that my chapter two quiz is here and we can see that it's assigned. You can also assign this test from here as well. If you're on this main page and you haven't assigned it yet, if you click on a web test here, you can also see the settings that we just took a peek at, the general settings and the additional settings. And you can also assign it directly from here by clicking on assign. And then you'll wanna click on the section you would want to assign it to again and simply click that assign button one more time. These are the main features of the web test tool. Um, I'm going to stick around for a few minutes to see if anyone has any questions. If you do have questions, you can should be a question in a Q and A box on your Zoom link. Um, feel free to ask me a couple questions. I'm happy to stick around. And as always, don't hesitate to reach out to your designated training and support representative or a tech support team. And we're always happy to help answer any questions you might have. But thank you all for attending. Good question. We have one question um, from an instructor and it's asking about students who need more time on the test. <clears throat> There's a couple different ways we can set that up right here. The first way I'll show you is if you wanted to give some students specific directions or specific settings, if you click on the web test name right here, you can see that's highlighted and we have our settings on the right hand side. I recommend going into the student settings by test. Once you come into here, you can start typing in the name of your student that you need to allow more time or update any of those settings for them. So if I come into here and I start typing in my name on the student in my course today. So if you click on this student's name, you can give them more time by extending the start and end day right here. Um, you can adjust the attempts if you would like to. And at the end, you can see that by default, I'm giving my students 60 minutes, but maybe this student, we're gonna give them 120 minutes um, just for them. Good question, thank you. Hang around for another minute or two and see if there's any more questions. All right, guys, thank you very much for attending. Oh, looks like we have one more question coming in here. Let's see. So we got one question about um, not web tests specifically, but about archiving past courses. Um, I will show you real quick about this and then I'll also um, recommend getting in contact with your training support rep as well. They'll probably be, be able to go into a little bit more information about this. Um, but essentially, instructors can archive past courses by going to this tools tab up here and then going down to archive gradebooks. They click on this, they will name this if they want to and simply click archive gradebook. When you archive a gradebook, um, it's essentially taking a screenshot of the gradebook. So if you need to look at student scores from past semesters, you'll have it easily ready for you to review. And you can always view those under this view archive gradebooks option. All right, guys, thanks again for the questions. And if anyone else has any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your training and support representative or anyone at our Hawks team will always be happy to help. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.